At the beginning of 2020, actions were swift in the Falkland Islands to prevent the spread of COVID-19 virus. High-risk individuals were placed in isolation, non-essential businesses were closed and guidance given on social distancing. As of the 9th of July, there have been no positive cases in the islands for over two months. With the easing of restrictions, the risk now comes from overseas and as a first line of defence, the government have issued a mandatory 14-day quarantine for new arrivals. If a whole family is arriving in the islands, then yes, the whole family would need to quarantine uh, in, in their home, ideally, um, and, and stay in the home, stay away from, from other people. Um, where a family member is coming back into the family home, then no, there isn't a requirement for the rest of that household to quarantine. Uh, which is one of the things I think people have asked about. What we do um, advise though is that within the home everyone tries to distance themselves so you know if you're able to keep a separate uh, bedroom, separate bathroom that's great, if not try and keep as far apart as possible, make sure that you do regularly wash down surfaces that sort of thing and if that is going to be really too difficult uh, for, for a family to accommodate uh, I mean, I know I've got um, some young boys and, and it's not necessarily easy to keep uh, away from them at all times. Then, then one of the things that the government has uh, put in place is to facilitate accommodation for people. So if you really can't manage to quarantine and keep separate within the home, there is that option as well to ask the government to help and provide you with alternative accommodation so that you are able to meet the requirements. Uh, so that's, that's basically the, the, the current position in relation to, to families arriving. New arrivals are expected to receive a phone call from the King Edward Memorial Hospital to check on their location and their personal health. For those who fail to adhere to the 14-day quarantine period, then they could see a £2,000 fine and or three months in prison. If um, someone can't be contacted, uh, then that the, that the police would get involved and that again they would they would go around and see if they could they could contact the person at the address they're supposed to be at and then take further action if if need be um, I mean obviously you know we'd, we'd hope that there's no need for, for enforcement action you know we're asking people to quarantine we're requiring people to quarantine uh, for the you know to protect everyone in the community so friends and family as well as as well as themselves so it's in everybody's interests to to try and you know work together to to make this happen but yes there are powers for the police to to take action if someone uh, breaches their quarantine requirement if symptoms do show during the quarantine period then they should contact the KEMH at the earliest opportunity nevertheless the quarantine regulations are required to be reviewed every six weeks and possess a limited time frame. The incubation period for this uh, disease is reckoned to be less than 14 days and I think on average it's five or six days so if someone was going to develop it they should in, in the vast majority of cases have developed it by that point so we feel that the risks then are very very low and that's why people can just be released straight from quarantine. Full and limited exemptions for the quarantine period can be granted which include members of the military, UK civil servants or lawyers. Persons who are exempt will be informed before travelling but must inform the chief medical officer with necessary evidence to support the exemption. We will put measures in place so that the people do quarantine when they're not at work and that they wear appropriate um, protective equipment etc and their interactions with people here are, are, are as limited as possible so it's not that there is no measure in place it's just that some different measures are in place and the benefits of having that work done outweigh the um, requirement to, to have those people in, in quarantine. With the introduction of the antibody testing machine and frequent surveillance swabbing as well as training staff in how to deal with the pandemic should it arrive in the Falkland Islands. The islands is seemingly more prepared than it was at the beginning of 2020. We've got our drug supply chain sorted out, we've got more equipment and kit and of course the ability to test on island for uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus in our laboratory is really helpful. We've actually got two different platforms now to test for that virus. So bit like London buses we didn't have any for a long time and then we've got two different platforms we can use so that's really really helpful we've got resilience in the lab from that point of view 
So all of these things is a, a lovely suite of um, tools that we can use to help control and contain COVID. I think we're in a much better position as a government and as a department in the hospital in particular than we were. Goodness me, yeah, we were, we were starting from scratch.